Are we waiting on us? <laughs> <laughs> Gazing across the bonsai at Mary Mauser. <laughs> Who to thunk? Put here specifically for you. I, yes, I would like no, to say I'll, I'm the accessory. No, next not to quite. <laughs> not quite. Yes, we're all accessories <laughs> to, to the, the bonsai. bonsai. Yeah. How you been? I've been good. Good. I've been good. Yeah. Enjoying a little bit of a break from season five. Sort of. I like to keep myself somewhat busy, so I'm still trying to train and and stay in fighting shape. Okay, that makes one of us. No, not true. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm training as well. It takes too long to get back in. Yeah. Uh, I used to be able to snap right back in. <laughs> now things just snap. <laughs> um, where you've gone from season one to this point in the martial arts, amazing. Amazing. And I'm so glad the camera's got that because that's from the Karate Kid and yeah. I want that for myself <laughs> okay. for the rest of my life. I want to own that moment. <laughs> well, it was, you know, hey, listen, this proud fake dad. What can I tell you? What <laughs> no, can I tell you? Really, it's been you... so much fun. I mean, I, you saw me season one. I couldn't it took two hours to teach me how to do one hook kick. Right. And then now it's now it's a it's a yeah, hobby. Yeah, no, it's you're fun. a beast. You're making <laughs> us all look look bad. You know, it certainly was easier back in the day for me yeah. to do all that stuff. You guys had um, a lot of training leading up to the films, though, right? Yeah, for the film, for the Karate Kid, we probably trained six solid weeks. Wow. And then throughout the film, we would rehearse. And John Avildsen, our director, would always, you know, more and more and more, faster, better. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't you can't practice this enough, is what he would always say, okay. and uh, and he directed a film little picture called Rocky, so oh, we he had some leverage. <laughs> uh, we couldn't say no. We don't you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So all the sequences in the Karate Kid, certainly the stuff Billy and I did, leading up to the tournament, you know the skeleton fight at the fence. We had weeks, and then we would in between scenes always be running that stuff. The payoff scenes with Pat Morita and I with the, the chores and it becoming, you know, karate moves and that sort of revelation. That was something we rehearsed for weeks on end. Cobra Kai, on the other hand, uh -huh. uh, as you know, sometimes it's literally on. I mean, we, we, we do all the prep work, but sometimes it's on the day. It's on the fly because of, you know, the schedule, the budget and how this show is uh, done. Uh -huh. How's that been for you? I mean, I have a lot of fun with it. I love as much, you know, prep time as, as humanly possible. So that's what I was going to ask is, you know, we get to train those kind of those first couple of episodes. I feel like we usually get the most, you know, we get all that time to prepare before going into a season. And then we get the fights for like episodes. Usually, what is it like three? We mm -hmm. kind of like start off with our first like karate beats and like two or three, you get more into it in four and then you get the mid season in five. And I feel like all of that, we get that like lead in time to mm -hmm. practice. By the time we get to those episode nine and 10 fights oh, where it really God. counts, we are jamming through, you know, all the rest of it. I think that's the the skill that I've picked up on top of the martial arts from this show is really just having to let go of that inner voice in my head that's like, do you know what you're supposed to do next? And right. really just having to trust my body to like, there is a fist coming at my head, yeah, better that's duck. Right. <laughs> that's, right. that's the toughest, that, that's the biggest difference yeah. is when you have that time and it becomes a ballet that it's, the, the moves are in your body, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, Billy and I always talk about back in the day, we barely touched each other because it was all precision work from building it uh, from the ground up and having weeks to prepare. In this case, he's like, why do I have brood? We all have these welts. <laughs> yes. Because even though we know it's coming, we're not at that, at that perfection point, so you just go through it. Yeah. I love the stunts. I gush about it. Do you have a favorite? And does it go all the way back to, uh, to the originals? Well, or? listen, they were easier to do <laughs> when I was younger. Listen, everyone talks about the crane kick, okay? It's a piece of cinema that is pop culture, right? We did it 70 times, 30 times, 40 times, whatever it was to find it. It's that one low and wide shot. I worked hard to, to have it, and I didn't know if it was going to work. I didn't know if the movie was going to work. You know, we really didn't know. How come you didn't tell me? Tell you what? That you do karate. You never ask. We felt that Pat and I had something special. Mm -hmm. There was there was something I always called soulful magic, and it was and it still is. But whether it all would come together, only time would tell. But in Cobra Kai, I would have to say 
The hockey fight was fun for me. Yes. You have a great story piece where Johnny uses a Miyagiism to set Daniel up in a situation where he may have to strike first. Um, it's sort of like, okay, I see this perspective. Even though I don't agree with these teachings, I understand where in certain circumstances. So story-wise, it was very rich. And then, you know, I'm a big hockey fan, so they set that up. And uh, so that, that fight was my first big, you know, me against five guys, 10 times my size. and. <laughs> Pulling it off, Re rematch with Billy was something we had some extra time to do, which was nice. The reason why I liked how that scene played out is because it was all from the perspective of the characters, and that's something Billy and I spoke about. We just, we just don't want to be like, okay, now we're two guys in our 50s, and we have to fight like we did when we were teenagers. So we didn't want to pretend to just try to do that again. And it was more about both of them standing on ceremony for, for their beliefs on behalf of the kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I, I like the way that fight played out. And there's others coming that we can't tease yet. Yeah, I, yeah, oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, no, but That's I will say- What you no, just no, did right there is awesome. <laughs> I took a second, I realized exactly what I was thinking about, okay. But, but for you then, I will say though, favorites. first of all, getting to referee the original oh, that's right. that's Karate right. Kid rematch is literally like, if I could just, if I just get one thing in my obituary that makes me sound cool, like someone put that in there because like that's, I got to literally like hold the flag and be like, fight. Like <laughs> no. that was such a, like Shona and I like off, like off to the side or over there just kind of like, this is weird. Like, it was this weird. Is pinch we me joke weird. we should have sold like pay per view. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will, and then like, do you get another? What's the other angle? There's only one angle. Yeah, that's great. So good. But yeah, no. I, okay, I will say for my for myself, I fell completely in love with the sport, the art, the the size. The, yes, and that's what I was gonna say. Like I have so much fun with the kicking and the punching, and I, I loved learning point fighting because uh, season four was Samantha's first experience with point fighting. Season four, I just loved being back in the tournament because that's. Yeah. That, it felt very Karate Kid again, so that yes. was really cool. Yeah, no, there was something so fun too about the lights, everybody walking in under, through mm -hmm. the fog, and that whole like the drama of it all was so fun. But yeah, no, learning point fighting was something very different. Fighting in the sense of, of strategy, and I feel like you know, this show itself has taught me a lot of respect for sports and things like that in a way that I hadn't seen it before. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of, of of the strategy that has to go into every single move was, was really cool and very, um, gave me such, respect and, and, and weight with martial arts as we were shooting five, I now had this background that I kind of didn't have before that mm -hmm. of thinking about fighting, not just for the sake of injuring another person or protecting myself, but for the sake of actually executing an, like an art form, which was really cool. And with that, obviously, came my size, which mm -hmm. are my, my new favorite weapon. I got to, you know, learn the bow staff and that was so fun because it was a really fun moment with us. I loved that scene. Oh yeah, of, yeah, that of, was really nice. That was so, so cool and, and felt very, um, getting to be the Karate Kid's daughter and, mm. and getting to have the idea of Mr. Miyagi's teachings, making their way down to his you know, granddaughter, for lack of a better um, relationship term. But the bow staff was super fun, but I love the size and, and getting to have those in my hand and knowing that they're, they're traditional, like very Okinawan based. They're more so a defensive weapon than they are an offensive weapon. And all of those things felt so true to like Samantha's journey and, and her you know, relationship with her father and with Mr. Miyagi and all the things that you know, kind of came together for that. Getting to learn that weapon was, was really fun and being able to prove to myself that I could actually accurately learn a, a weapon was, to that extent. It was, was incredible. Really so here, the blow, the complimentary more on that. No. Uh, but uh, they were never out of your hands. No. Did you true. sleep with them? Yes. <laughs> they okay. slept right next to my bed, staggered just like so, this. <laughs> There was such a, this is where the, the, the lines blur and Ralph and Daniel LaRusso and Mary and, and Samantha. I was just beyond enamored with pride. These are better, better adjectives, but those are the two that came to mind. That some of the moms of, of the, uh, some of the younger cast members came up to me as parents. And they, said, they were all teary-eyed because they said, we were just watching you watch her and it's a moment that didn't make it into the cut because it didn't fit into the montage with the cool music and all the stuff that makes Cobra Kai Cobra Kai mm -hmm. but um, that's just an interesting tidbit to, to touch on it was a, a special moment it <laughs> was me. really yeah I got gotcha. you <laughs> 
That's it. That's the end but of it. No, I, I, it's funny because I remember the that like I remember as soon as I finished it. You know, obviously I had my 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 senseis there who taught me the weapon, um, Selkie Hom, who's my stunt double and one of our um, one of our fight coordinators, and Don Lee, who who is yeah, one of our fight coordinators, and he's such a master with the size, and he put them in my hands for the first time, and of course I, you know, got so excited to to hype it up with them, but I finished that shot, and I I don't even think I. Th- wondered whether or not the cameras were still rolling. I think I figured they had already cut, and as soon as I finished the set, I ran directly to you and hugged you. It was just, it was <laughs> like, I was like, oh, this is like, this is, this because feels Because it's like one that. of those, it's one of those things in the moment, in a show where badass is so cool and fighting and, you know, all that stuff. This was a, a martial art form, the skills element of martial arts, and the beauty of it that had power and yet had grace and sort of was essence of the Miyagi universe. When I look at that movie, the Karate Kid is Mr. Miyagi. I mean, it's not only that, but you take Mr. Miyagi and Pat Morita out of that movie. First of all, you don't have a a hit movie. You certainly have no Cobra Kai story because that's what got us here. So all that stuff without overthinking it is all subliminal to me and in those moments so that that was a special one that'll live on that'll live on that's one of those two like sitting in bed i'm like feeling bad about myself i'm like but there was that, that one time I there was that. that one time i was cool that's right. <laughs> it's, it's been quite amazing it's been quite amazing everyone's arc the the concept that we have we have shot season five to this point and the journey of this show built off the you know the source material or the legacy uh, original for me it's a mind trip. It's yeah. just crazy. But to see everyone blowing up from it and, and, and all ages enjoying it and revisiting and, and going back to the movies, it's, it's quite special and unique. There are, are few examples of that, I think. Yeah. Now, so how does that feel for you as this, you know, the young, awesome generation? <laughs> I mean, I, I always talk about this the other day, like, funny enough, I mean, the room we're sitting in right now is just, what, a few yards away from where I very first met you, which yes. was another situation like this, or sitting across Better from each other. Better lighting here. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But my, my final chemistry read for, for Cobra Kai, and it was, I remember sitting into that room, I met you for the first time, and we were told almost the same thing, just basically talk, like, mm-hmm. what do they say? Shoot the breeze. And I didn't Shoot know the what, the freeze, oh, what the phrase meant. I said I had to explain. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, just, he sees right. me about it, but uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's it's crazy to think from that moment. I remember meeting you. I was very, I was nervous. I was in, I was intimidated, but because I was like, oh, I get to. Because I'm someone a told you well, of a movie I was yeah, in well, no, that has no, something like, to do with. I was like, this is this is the name that that Samantha carries. This is the you know the the weight on on her shoulders. But but at the same time, I knew I was being hired to be the Karate Kid's daughter, and I knew I was being hired to be the next generation Karate Kid's girlfriend, and that's basically all I knew of season one and, mm. and so I had no concept that I would one day be doing karate as the right, karate that, kid's daughter exactly so it, it like the the weight of that changed very much between seasons one and two where one I was like begging like hey can I throw like one kick it'd be really cool and then like all of a sudden was like this is a lot to live up to there's mm-hmm. a lot to carry but it's it's been so much fun and I love getting to meet the people I feel like we're in that like you said that perfect fan base range where like I'm meeting like teens who would watch the show the way that I would watch this show and I'm like oh my gosh like the high school drama and the martial arts and like all the cool of that and then the parents that I meet who are like I can't tell you what this film has meant to me my whole life and then the kids that I meet now that are watching it that are now Karate Kid fans right. it's so cool yeah that is that is you know when I spoke before about what's so unique and special about it is one of those few pieces of entertainment that connects nostalgia with relevance you know your your couch is like your your 12 year old kid and your the babysitter and the parents and the grandparents, <laughs> and they all are coming from a different vantage point and prism and perspective of the story. Yeah. It's like, you know, I remember one couple saying, the kids would come in like, you know, my favorite character is Hawk, and it's so cool. Don't you play Mr. LaRusso on Cobra? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, I play Mr. LaRusso on your your favorite show, Cobra Kai. And that is one of the, the moments. The, the, the first day I was called like, hey, Mr. LaRusso. <laughs> it was just odd, because for 30-something years, it was like... Danny, you know, Daniel LaRusso, Daniel, the Karate yeah. Kid. It's way more sweet than bitter. The only bitter part of it is like, I'm not that kid no more. <laughs> but that's life anyway. So when when Robbie comes in season one, I was like, man, you are walking in my shoes and I am, guess, 
you know, I'm supposed to be the mentor. Um, and it was kind of interesting to play it from that, that perspective. And it was also nostalgic and kind of emotional to be able to carry the other side of that. But it also gives me the opportunity to get second chances at certain scenes from a different angle. Oh, that gave me chills. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, that's something I discovered over the course of doing the show. Oh, I feel like I'm getting a really small scale version of that with starting out with the show with season one, like I said, and being the daughter and the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then now having my own karate arc, my own rival, my own kind of thing. And then watching that already now we have, you know, Kenny right. and Anthony and, you know, the people that we kind of got to see taking on the All Valley and the, uh, Devin, uh, played by Una, is, she's, she's so such a little rock star. Like, uh, it's yeah, so I adore cool. Her. She's a fantastic. Um, she's so badass. Like, I don't know how I want to say that, but like, she's so cool. And like, getting to, you know, already see that next, next generation coming in and starting to be the big sister mm -hmm. now and like having like yeah. the role of like my own little karate wisdom that I get to pass down yeah, in a they, way. Is... The guys, you know, keep expanding this universe. <laughs> 